I'm going to talk about um, TIAs today. And a TIA, basically, it's a medical um, acronym. It's a transient ischemic attack. And for this, I am going to need to put on some surgical scrubs that don't actually apply to this topic. All right, and the reason why I say the surgical scrub doesn't actually apply real to this subject because you don't really see them do surgery with TIAs or CVAs. CVA is a cerebral vascular accident or a stroke. Um, TIA is often referred to as a mini stroke. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the differences in the stroke, like the major major stroke, and the mini stroke. Now, a TIA, as the name says, is transient or it comes and goes. Now, a transient ischemic attack appears the same as a CVA. So, you will have the classic signs of a stroke. You may have drooping in one eye, one side of the face. You may drool on one side of the face, not be able to, you know, uh, hold the fluid in your mouth, whether it's saliva or a drink. You may have difficulty swallowing, speaking. You may have slurred speech or not be able to speak at all. Um, they may be lethargic and you know, sleepy. Um, may have the effect in one arm, one leg, like on the right side, because typically, whenever you have a stroke or a mini stroke, it affects one side of the brain. Um, and whatever side of the brain that affects, it affects the opposite side of the body. So if you have a TIA on the left side of your head or a stroke on the left side of your head, the right side of your body is going to be affected. It could be your right face, right side of your face, arm, leg, things like that. You may have numbness and tingling in your face, arm, or leg. And several things also come along with these. Um, but with the transient ischemic attack it tends to go away. It will improve and you'll get the function back. With a CVA, that does not always happen because it's very difficult for the brain to rewire itself. Sometimes it can, but you will often, most times, not get all of the functionality back that you had prior to that stroke. Now, I know personally, because my mom, she had a couple strokes and she had a major stroke. Strokes, a CVA, can lead to coma and death even. can have permanent damage um, as far as um, your neurological functioning, your mental abilities as far as speech, thought process, things like that. Um, my mother was paralyzed for the rest of her life on her right side. Um, so she had to learn to read and write, walk, and talk all over again after she had her strokes. Um, she was comatose for a while and she had had feeding tubes. That's another thing that would happen if you're comatose or if you can no longer swallow without breathing breathing it into your lungs um, because that's called aspiration pneumonia and is very bad it can kill you. So I kind of get off topic because there are so many different little things that can go on um, along with strokes that happen, you'll need physical therapy, speech therapy, occupational therapy. You'll have a neurologist will come and see you. You'll have probably an internal medicine doctor. Um, but TIA specifically, as I said, they can go away. Um, all those symptoms can go away. You can have perfect functionality after that. Although you are at a higher risk to have another C uh, TIA or CVA in the, in the future. Um, one of the things they'll probably put you on is a cholesterol med like Zocor or uh, Tricor or you know some cholesterol lowering medication, um, and they'll they'll probably do Dopplers, carotid Dopplers right here. And they'll do those to see if there are blockages on either side that go to the brain that would prevent blood from flowing, cut off blood flow, and cause a TIA or a CVA. Now some of the things that actually cause them, like I just said. Um, lack of blood flow to the brain, lack of oxygen, those can cause them, and that can be caused by plaque buildup in the arteries, especially the ones right here, the carotid arteries going to the brain. Um, extremely high blood pressure can cause strokes and many strokes. Um, clots can cause strokes and many strokes. Um, a hemorrhage, like if an artery in your brain somehow ruptures and it causes bleeding, that bleeding can cause a stroke or mini stroke. Um, so they will oftentimes do a CAT scan of the head, maybe even an MRI of the head. 
um, and they will do that without contrast first to see if there's any bleeding and then they'll do it with contrast if there is not to find out if there's ischemia there or lack of blood flow now the reason that they they do it without contrast first because if they do it with contrast first and there is bleeding that contrast will goes through the blood obviously and then it will basically just white out the whole scan and they won't be able to see anything where it's coming from or anything at all so that's why they do it that way now those are the main points about a TIA and a CVA um, and what to look for with the numbness, the tingling, the lack of speech, the lethargy, um, the lack of functionality on one side of the body. Um, my mother was on the phone with a friend whenever she experienced a TIA. Um, I know it's a TIA now. I didn't back then. I was 12 years old whenever it happened. And uh, she had her tongue had gone numb and she couldn't speak right. And we ended up taking her to the hospital, but they sent her home. And the next day, she had a massive CVA, and she ended up comatose, and all kinds of things happened along with that. Um, years and years of therapy. So, but there is hope um, if you do have a CVA. Um, even with all this therapy and, and everything that they can go through with you to regain some of this functionality, my mother was able to, you know, like I said, read, write, walk, talk, all that, all over again. Um, she was also able to drive again, and she went back to work, and she even uh, went back and got um, other certifications in her specific job. So, you can do all of that. Um, it does take a lot out of you, and it's, it's a huge adjustment for the entire family. But, you know, as long as you have people that love and care about you and support you, then you'll be able to make it through. You just need to have that support system. That is one of the biggest things, is support system. Um, as a nurse myself, whenever I have patients that come in with these symptoms, with these diagnoses, and with these problems, we don't just treat the patient. we got to treat the family as well. So, all right, all right, this is a long video, so I'm going to have to uh, cut it down a little bit. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, put them in the uh, comments below. Of course, I can't give out any uh, medical advice because that's just not allowed. I would probably lose my license if I did. But, uh, of course, you know, go to the nearest emergency room, call 911, something like that, if you would experience any of these things yourself, or if someone you are with experiences any of these things, because they need to get it taken care of as soon as possible. There are drugs that they can give you to help bust up these clots, if it's a clot causing a CVA or a TIA, but they have to do it really quickly. So go and do that. All right. Um, other topics, leave them in the comments below, and I will uh, address those as best I can. So I'll put some link to, links to the National Institutes of Health down below, as well as the CDC or Centers for Disease Control. Um, yeah. Imagine a good outro here. <laughs>